while it's true that the Irish have known uh, a fair share of, of oppression, the reality is, uh, during that oppression, we still maintained our, our invisibility cloak of white privilege. And we often hear about white privilege, and it hadn't really occurred to me that I had white privilege as well, but now, listening to you, I understand that I do have a privilege. I think we shouldn't forget that our parliament still looks very male, very stale and pale. Of course you can say that you're a middle-class white man. So you view the law completely different to somebody who is a traveller, to somebody who is uneducated, to somebody who's maybe a member of the Roma community. So it is very, very different. You know that the law doesn't treat you the same. It doesn't treat you the same. Well, you, as a white privileged man, how does my debt impact your life? I think it's worth putting on the record of, of this House um, that, that concept of, of white privilege and, and how that can be uh, normatised in our own lives. And, you know, we, we as, uh, as we develop as a society and a more racially integrated society, I think need to become more and more conscious of that uh, within our own politics and, and the advantage that that has brought. But the corollary being that your whiteness is itself an advantage and to really understand Understand that. I often observe young people as they walk together. One of their party or two of their party will be uh, uh, from, you know, their, their background maybe from a different country, and they are, you know, celebrating that and they are engaged in that much more so than the very dull, white, pasty Ireland that I grew up in. I think what we need to do in our own political system is to call out the hypocrisy of standing in a parliament like this, full of white people and saying is racism is something that other people do, because it's what politicians here in Ireland do. Because the Ireland that I grew up in was made for people just like me. It was made for white, middle-class, able-bodied, heterosexual uh, men. It was made for us. We've always run this place. We see ourselves everywhere. And if you walk around the walls of, uh, or, or the halls of, of this esteemed uh, uh, building, you generally see people who just look just like me. There is obviously a, a fairly obvious deficiency in what we're doing. We're basically a room full of white men talking about racism. Um, so just to name that. Um, one thing I strongly agree with the deputy on is the need to target, set a target to have a, a number of people from ethnic minorities in areas of the public service. We have a health service that's very diverse, although less so as you go up towards the senior positions, uh, not so much in the Gardaí, not so much in the Defence Forces, not so much in the education sector, as the Deputy mentioned, not at all in the civil service, which is very white, including the Department of Equality, for example, uh, and that actually needs to change. There's serious work that needs to be done in the context of Irish politics, because even when you look at a male-dominated you know, politics, who are the males dominating that? And the majority are more privileged, mm -hmm. um, are predominantly white. There is very little ethnic visibility across any of that. So measures need to be put in place to start looking at that. Yeah, the last thing we want to do is replace a bunch of straight, white, middle-class, able-bodied men with a bunch of straight, white, middle-class, able-bodied women. Um, I yeah. think we need kind of intersectional approaches. Uh, but I know that's not what you were... Yeah. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, and, and I, no, I take that point. I was, uh, I was just, just trying to hone course, in on that yeah. one. I mean, the, you, it's, it's vast, but you know, it's made up of a number of elements, gender is one, yeah.